Okay, welcome. So, today I wanted to offer some reflections about boarding school syndrome and the lover archetype and just how at boarding school that part of us that is sensitive, that part of us that is spontaneous and loving, how that is suppressed and I feel that's the one we need to work on most. Okay, okay so uh, last week um, on my podcast on Thursday, Wednesday, I spoke to Rod Boothroyd, the author of the book Warrior, Magician, Lover, King. And this was, I think, the fourth time that we've spoken. And yeah, we were talking about the lover archetype. And if you can imagine that you've got these four archetypes, so this was Jung who came up with this, um, but essentially they're ancient um, depth psychology. Really, if you look at the old myths and legends, you look at um, King Arthur, you look at, um, you know, a lot of these ancient tales, they've got the king, the warrior, the magician, and the lover in them. And what Jung said is that we basically have these aspects within us. So the king is about order. It's about a vision. It's about a blessing. You've got the warrior, which is about action. It's about doing, it's about boundaries. You've got the, um, the magician. It's about the mind. It's about thinking. It's about the sacredness as well, um, eldership as well. Uh, and then the third part, the fourth part is the lover, which is emotions. It's about uh, spontaneity. It's about joy. It's about there uh, being no boundaries. And in my work over the years with exporters, I see that the, the one aspect that we struggle with the most is the lover. And the reason I see that, and I've kind of written this in my second book, this idea that that aspect of us that was spontaneous, you know, it was like, right, I'm going to go and do this, or joyful, it was suppressed. It wasn't allowed, you know, um, connecting with others, you know, the thing about the lover archetype is, Wanting to be touched, to be hugged, you know, it's a natural part of being human is to want to connect. But in boarding school, I feel all we've had trauma is that we withdraw inside ourselves. Um, and especially at a boarding school, in my school, it was if there was touch, that meant you were gay. If someone hugged you, Stephen Fry talks about in his book, uh, Moab is my wash pot. He says, you know, one day he put his arm around someone who came out of the swimming pool who had cramp and it went around the school really quickly that he was gay. And it was like, no, I'm just helping a friend who's struggling. Um, and so that's another aspect which is suppressed. Um, uh, another aspect, you know, eros, sexuality. You know, in most traditions, you know, in, in Asia, um, certainly in most cultures, sex is, or nudity is, is kind of embraced more. You know, you, but you think of Germany or, you know, some of the, the, the more, um, you know, Asian countries, it's seen as just a natural, healthy part. But in a boarding school environment, it's very much like, oh, it's, it's got to be hidden. In my school, if you were caught masturbating, self-pleasuring, then you could potentially be suspended. Uh, or put on a red card, which was basically, um, you know, if you got a, too many of those, then you would be uh, suspended and then expelled. So it was like, it was punishable. It was a, seen as a bad thing. So I feel that that aspect of us is the one which needs the most work. So, you know, what I'd really recommend, and I'll put a link into this video um, to the, the full length interview with Rod Boothroyd, really recommend you listen to these because I feel at school we will, were not taught how to be mature uh, masculine men or women. We were taught by boys and girls who were pretending to be men. You know, this stoic, oh, I'm fine, you know, rather than this you know, being modelled by adults. You know, there was 50, ad uh, 50 children for one adult in my boarding uh, house, and most schools are similar, you know. 
Tuins Opperman, who I spoke to in my podcast number 25, head teacher, says that nowadays it's very similar. The teachers do not have the chance because they're just so busy. They've got all this paperwork. They don't have a chance to really spend much time with the children. So I feel this is something just to be aware of, is to learn. The king, the warrior, the magician and the lover, or the, the, the sovereign, as Rod Boothwood says, you know, so women, it's the queen. You know, we can cultivate these things. We can cultivate, learn how to be a mature masculine, mature man, a mature woman. And, you know, if we're an exporter, then I say that the thing we need to work on most is the lover, the lover aspect. So in there, he, he teaches a few ideas about how we connect to the lover. So, you know, it's acting as if, you know, acting as if you are the lover. So it might be, you know, uh, I'm kind of here, looking down over the valley. It's like just stopping, looking at this beautiful view and really imagining that I am that, that lover, that Michelangelo or that, you know, the Van Gogh looking and going, wow, that's beautiful. Maybe Van Gogh's not a great <laughs> uh, example, but, you know, that lover the artist, the creative, and just connecting, luxuriating, feeling, imagining that, yes, I have that within me, you know, another way is being tactile, getting a massage, and it might feel uncomfortable at the beginning, it did for me in my 20s, now it's kind of learning, yeah, to have a massage, maybe some shiatsu, Rod Booth would recommend, do these things, not just you know, every now and again. He says not just once. You know, every week, every month. It's like pencil it in. Allow that trauma because a lot of our trauma is stored in the body. Uh, again, as Peter Levine talks about or Bessel van der Kolk. Therefore, by being tactile, by having massage or shiatsu, body work, that starts to release it. It starts to release that. So there's lots of other ideas in there about how we connect to the lover. Um, so I really recommend you listening to that. And yeah, just seeing, okay, it has been suppressed and I can now bring it more into the light. And he talks about Rod as well, this idea that when it does go into shadow, what can happen then is it's either we become an addict when the lover, so a lot of us as ex-boarders, you know, my father was an addict, uh, an alcoholic, you know, he was ex-border, you know, I struggled with addictions, you know, it's like, ah, it's because I'm not giving enough light to, to bring it to the lover, to touch, moving more into my love, my joy, what do I love in life, what do I enjoy doing, and then doing it, um, and the other aspects of the lover in shadow, so you've got the addict, the, then is the impotent lover. You know, we've almost got too serious, we're too on work, we're too busy. Um, and then that can impact our relationships. So, yeah, it's a really fascinating conversation. And I just thought I would share a little bit uh, about that. Um, and I'll, I'll do another video. I'll probably put this up tomorrow. But um, I meet speaking to Dawson Church on Monday. And he's one of the world's leading researchers into energy psychology, which is EFT, tapping. Um, and, you know, he's a PhD, and he works with uh, PTSD as well, people coming back from Afghanistan, Iraq, um, and, you know, he's got a charity that he, he works with people, so I'm really excited with that, and I'll, I'll put a little bit more information, uh, but yeah, I've got lots of updates at the moment, um, so any questions, yeah, do let me know, I've got my men's circle on Thursday, tomorrow, um, which is around the magician archetype, the immature forms of the precocious lover, um, the trickster, the know-it-all trickster, um, and the other one is the, I think it's the dummy. So these are all, again, aspects of us um, that we can work on and heal. So, um, yeah, really great uh, to speak to you all. If you have any questions, something which doesn't make sense, please do put it below. Uh, okay, blessings.